and I'm not alone. I've got a team, actually four. We've won. One of the teams is going to be focusing on the to-dos itself. There will be the people team. Um, they will be focusing on people who want uh, things to get done. The engagement team is really important because that's going to help drive behavior. That's going to motivate people to actually get things done. And the platform team, they will be working on uh, cross-cutting concerns. We're going to be using micro frontends because we think that micro frontends are going to help us. It's gonna, they're going to give us the autonomy we need to be innovative in this very competitive to do market. Before I, before I continue, let me share with you a definition of micro frontends. Micro frontends are a type of software architecture um, for building distributed front end applications. And you can think of them as uh, um, a collection of small micro apps that they are lean. What does lean mean? That's an acronym, acronym that I created myself, and it stands for loosely coupled. They are executed and deployed independently. They are autonomously developed and managed. And they are narrowed to a business domain. That's for us a micro front end. So of course, our to-dos should comply with this lean architecture. Let me share with you some of the wireframes we've got so far. We are a very lean team. We like to ship things very quickly and get feedback from our customers. So, you know, don't, they're not very impressive, but there we go. So we have three pages. In the first page, we're going to have the activity feed, where we will, will we displaying what your friends are achieving. And there is also a navigation bar, and, and they are both owned by two different teams. On the next page, we have the to-do. And uh, here we can create to-dos and display our to-do list. Uh, it's owned by a different team as well. And last but not least, we have the profile. Very simple at the moment, but you know we just want to get started. And that's um, owned by the people team. I don't know if you noticed, but the user's username is in every single domain. Let me show you. We've got in both there, also here, and also here. And to make it more fun, the profile domain can change the username. And so I guess if we change the username, it should change everywhere. Um, but that makes me think, because we want our mm, small apps to be lean, and you know they need to be uh, loosely coupled. So how are we going to solve this problem? Well, the first idea I thought was we can use an event bus. And it's pretty simple. We have this uh, component that is going to be this uh, piece of uh, in the architecture that is going to be listening for events. And it will, for instance, in this case, the profile will create an event. We'll put it on the bus. And then another micro app that is listening to it will uh, respond to that event. And, and it, it works. However, the to-do and the feed micro apps are not mounted. They are not there. So, I mean, if you are not there, you can't listen, right? So what do we do? We have a problem here. Um, well, let me think. We could fix this by making our event bus a bit smarter. Like, we could store what events are delivered to which micro apps. And so when you mount a micro app that was not mounted before, then you can get uh, like, wait, it's getting a bit complicated. Um, yeah, so how do we solve this problem to avoid this inconsistency? The thing is, the feed micro app in this case, or any other micro apps, they don't really care about events, right? Like, we're using an event bus because that's what we think it could solve the problem, but, you know, they don't care about events. What they care is about the output of the last event, right? If I, if I change my name 20 times, and then I mount a given micro app, I don't want to get the 20 events that I didn't get before, get before, right? So I just want the last, the output of the last event. We also refer to that as current state. <laughs> That's what I care about. So let's try a different approach. Um, now we're going to dispatch events, but we're going to subscribe to state changes and not to events. 
And this is the architecture of uh, Redux and RxJS. So it's basically the same idea. You have a stream of events or things or actions, things that happen over time, and then you're observing changes. And then to make it more interesting, you add a little bit of functional programming, like pure functions or reducers, so you can uh, you know, program things and make things uh, happen there. So let's try again, but now with Redux. We have our profile. Our profile, uh, notice the event bus has uh, become Redux. And the profile dispatches an action. And that action goes through Redux. And look at the other side. The arrow is, prov is providing some state, right? So now the navigation bar got updated. Um, if I go and navigate to the feed micro app, I'm just going to say, what's the current state? It's the, this is the new name. Perfect, it works. So we, we solve the problem. However, I think there is a problem here. And the problem is the last point. I don't think there is anything wrong with functional programming. But actually, it's quite cool. It's very powerful. And that's the problem. It gives us too much power in this layer, right? We are in this distributed architecture. and. In, in this paradigm, you don't want this layer in between to have behavior, logic, because who owns that layer, right? Let's have a look at uh, the previous example. In, in the case of Redux, we can have middlewares, and we can have reducers. So now the profile could say, you know, fetch a user, then the middleware will do some sagas, whatever you want to do there, some magic. Then it will pass it to the reducer that will manipulate the state, and finally will go to the nav bar. And this works, but we can add a lot of behavior there. And who owns that? Is it the profile? Is it the people team? Is it the engagement team? Who owns that? And that's the problem. And why is this a problem? Well, you end up in a distributed monolith, right? You have this centralized layer in this decent, uh, distributed architecture where you're adding logic into that Redux, who is owned by everyone. So not a good, not a good paradigm. What we're going to do instead is uh, we're going to change the last point. We're going to distribute the logic as well. And so what this layer is going to do is going to make sure that we don't do things more than once, or we will try to optimize resources, basically. So. We're going to move that behavior inside of the boundaries of the micro app, because now I know who owns that is the profile. But because we are distributed, we are also sending that to the navigation bar. Now everyone, if you want to get the username, like if you want to display the username, you're also responsible for fetching that data. So now let's say we land on this page and both independently want to display a username. So they say, give me the username load this data, and the runtime will execute only one of them, because why do you want to execute the same thing twice? And it will notify to all the subscribers after this uh, finishes. Notice also there is one runtime, but there can be many apps in this distributed architecture. We, this is what we just saw. We are sharing this runtime between two micro apps, but we can run our profile in isolation, uh, because they could be executed independently. Same thing for the nav bar, right? So we are going to have one runtime that can be created in many places uh, that can get a bit confusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this in two parts. Configuring the runtime, like defining what a runtime is, what can be in there, what we are going to share, and then creating runtimes. Now it's time for a demo. So here I have this, uh, I, I told you guys, I'm, we're lean, right? So we're shipping things very quickly. So uh, it's very simple, but um, it kind of works. So here I have my um, amazing best uh, to-dos app. Um, I can navigate between the different pages. And uh, I'm getting the names are all consistent. This is all very nice. I can also, for instance, run my uh, activity feed uh, independently, I execute this on a different tab. It's, it's fine, it's working. And what I can do if I go to the 
profile, I can uh, change my name um, or whatever, let me think something, and then navbar updates. Now if I navigate to the other micro apps, they've got the last value, current state, so it's all working nicely. Let me show you a little bit the code um, of this. So the way I've organized this is uh, on the left, I have these micros. Uh, I like to call them micro apps. Um, and so we have three of them. And let's have a look at the, the feed one, for instance. So what I do is I'm going to request, I want username, right? And let's have a look at this thing. Um, so what I do here is I'm going to create some bindings for my runtime that are specific for React. And the reason I do this is because I want my runtime to be very safe. I don't want anyone to mess up or make it very hard to mess up with my runtime. So I'm adding some uh, TypeScript and some nice stuff that is going to protect it specifically in the context of React. I can also look at my runtime. And uh, I can see here, um, let me make this. So here what I do is I, I configure my runtime. And I'm going to say that in my runtime, I'm going to be able to share this state here. And uh, if I go, for instance, to my app again, and I try to, you know, username is a string, because that's what, what we've got. If I try to access something that it's not allowed that we didn't configure that in our runtime. I won't be able to do that. To do that. Um, and also, I'm creating my runtime in many different places. For instance, I create it in this in the context of this uh, micro app. I can create a runtime. I can also do it in my profile, and you know, doesn't really matter. I can create my run my runtime in many different places, but I only configure my runtime in one place here, right? Um, so now let's say um, in my, you know, this guy, this team decides that they don't want to display the username anymore, right? So the username is going to be something like you. Like, we're not going to get that data. Fine. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna tell you, uh, gonna tell you something. Um, I'm gonna tell you, don't mess up with your demo before the demo. That's what you should never do. Uh, and you're, you, you didn't see anything. Now I come back to here, and so if I if I run this, ooh, the username is gone from the from the navigation bar. Right? Why? If I come back to my app and I add this, I guess the username. So here we have a problem. We are, have this dependency in, uh, in the navigation bar where I'm consuming the username. But I rely on this other thing called someone else. The feed is it's, it's initializing this value. So, and that's why when I remove the um, username in my feeds, then my navigation stops showing my feed. That's not good. So what we are going to do is, every time I get some data, or I want to share to, to get some global state, I also need to initialize. That. That's my responsibility. And so if I go back to the feed, we're going to keep both. Now it should work. But maybe you think, like, well, but now we're going to have two requests, right? We're going re to request the same data twice. But if you look at the network tab, we're only requesting the data once. So this runtime is making sure that we don't request, uh, that it optimizes our resources. So basically what we're doing here is I want the username, and uh, I give you a function to fetch that data and you run it, and you give me the, the output of this. Um, and one last thing I want to show you is, like, I have this runtime that I can observe data 
in different micro frontends in, in, in my application. But it would actually be cool if, you know, this is the distributed um, micro frontend. So what if I also run this application on my phone and I want to, to change uh, my username here on my phone? So my run thumb should be able to, to handle that thing as well, right? So in the end, it's we're observing data. It doesn't really matter where you distribute your, your micro frontends. So again, what, what is doing happening here under the hood, uh, the runtime is observing, in this case, we're using pusher. It doesn't matter, but it's going to create only one instance, uh, one connection to the server. All the micro frontends can go and say, I want to connect to that remote thing. And uh, the runtime will manage all the events, uh, mounting and unmounting, uh, everything under the hood. So you don't get too many connections, and you get all the data uh, that you need. So that was it. If you like this demo, if you like uh, this runtime thing, um, got something for you. I put that on an NPM package uh, this morning, actually. Uh, so we have uh, version 001. If you want to give it a, a go and try this, go ahead and, and, and give me feedback. And it's all for you. Um, if you like it, you can go to the uh, repo and smash that star. Um, really appreciate. Try, give me feedback. And uh, last but not least, uh, if you want to work on interesting challenges, uh, just, you know, hit that link and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>